Hello, everyone, and welcome to the April 2023 edition of The Patch Report. I am Dustin Childs, your host, Head of Threat Awareness here at the Zero Day Initiative, and our Chief Patch Wrangler. We've got a lot to cover, Adobe, Apple, and Microsoft this month, including some O-Days in Apple and Microsoft. So, hey, without any further ado, let's get straight to it. Let's start with the Adobe patches. They've got 56 CVEs fixed by six bulletins. Obviously, the most interesting here is going to be the reader update, which uh, corrects about 16 CVEs, and 14 of these could be arbitrary code execution. Again, you got to convince someone to open a PDF that's specially crafted. I do want to call out four of these CVEs were submitted at Pwned Own by Abdul Haziz Hariri, former ZDI member and currently of Haboob SA. Uh, so nice to see them fixing Pwned Own uh, stuff so quickly, and uh, always glad when that comes through. Uh, moving on to some Apple patches, we don't normally talk about Apple patches a lot, but they fixed two zero days last week and then yesterday for some other platforms. And these two CVEs are all the sort of the stuff that we talk about all the time, where you have one that's a code execution bug and another that is a privilege escalation bug. And Apple doesn't specifically say that they were used together in conjunction, but it makes sense. They were reported by the same researchers at the same time. And we know that threat actors use these types of bugs together. So if you're running Mac, if you're running iOS, iPad OS, et cetera, make sure you get the update and apply those. Moving on to Microsoft this month, we've got 97 new patches addressing CVEs in pretty much the common uh, core of what you get Microsoft patches for. Windows, Office, Defender, SharePoint, Hyper-V, blah, 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 you know the mix. Uh, of these, seven are rated critical. The most important is obviously gonna be this bug here in common log file system. And quite frankly, we can't talk about this bug without delving into a little tinfoil hat territory. Tinfoil hat theory time. Okay, now that I have my tinfoil hat on, uh, this bug is very, very similar to a bug that was patched in February that was also listed as a zero day exploit, which seems to me to think it may be uh, the February patch was not complete. And that's why we're patching it again for another O day so quickly, just two months later. Obviously, there's nothing from Microsoft that uh, indicates this, but it's just a, uh, it's a tinfoil hat theory of mine. I like it, and uh, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but uh, I'm sticking with it. That guy's a mess. All right, moving on. Another really interesting one is the CVSS 9.8 bug here in the message queuing uh, system, and it could allow remote code execution. This is not internet messaging, instant messaging, anything along those lines. This is messaging uh, between systems and between components of systems. This is gonna be on TC port 1801 by default. So locking this could be good, but depending on how you have your system set up and what you are configured to monitor, could also have some adverse impact. So monitor TCP port 1801 to see what's going on there. Uh, blocking it at the perimeter would certainly be an attack surface reduction. But this is a really, really cool bug, and it would not uh, surprise me to see it exploited within 30 to 60 days. Microsoft gives it its highest exploit rating as well. So definitely uh, take a look at this closely and test and deploy it quickly. Moving on, we have another SQL uh, server remote code execution bug, and God, he's gonna come back. Tinfoil hat theory time. Okay. Got the tinfoil hat on because this was shipped in February and it's just now being documented. That's right, it was a silent patch from February. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk online about why silent patches are bad. I won't rehash that here. Uh, I will just reiterate that silent patches are bad. So if you've had problems with your SQL Server last couple months, this may be one of the reasons. Uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a very important bug. Uh, however, exploitation is a little unlikely because you're very controlling very little but a server crash is much more likely. So if after February, your SQL service started crashing and you couldn't troubleshoot it, well, it's because of silent patch. And you know, okay, why is the tinfoil theory? Why did they patch it silently in February? Actually, it's probably they just, when you build a patch, you put a lot of bugs in it. They probably just forgot to document this one. I, I wish I could come up with something more malevolent than that, but it's probably just a case of they forgot to document it. Either way, it's a slightly patch, it's a bad thing. Make sure that you have the February and the April updates installed for SQL Server, or is it SQL? I don't know. Compose a comment below. Let me know if it's a SQL Server or if it's SQL Server to you, because I, I get different things from different people. But uh, check the table on these bulletins because it's very complex to make sure that you have the correct versions of cum cumulative updates installed. Make sure you get them installed. Okay, I think the last, that's the last we'll see of that guy. 
Moving on, we have CVE 2013-3900, and no, that is not a mistake. Uh, earlier today, Microsoft updated this 10-year-old bug uh, that is being reissued because it's getting additional platforms now. It was originally an opt-in fix, meaning that admins had to opt-in to get the fix. But this bug has actually been used in active attacks in the recent 3CX attacks. So it definitely takes some time. This is not a straightforward, and uh, you know, in these admins' defense, this is not a straightforward patch it, forget it sort of bug. You've got to do some extra things. There's another article that I link here in the blog. I'll link it below in the show notes as well. Uh, talking about the Microsoft Trusted Root Program and everything you need to do to fully opt into that. So make sure you take some time and read this. It was very significant that they updated a 10-year-old bug. Kudos to Microsoft for doing it. That's actually really cool, uh, and I'm glad to see it. Uh, hopefully, it's, fig well, it's a little too late for 3CX, but hopefully everyone else can get the fix and get uh, fully covered from this bug before any further attacks get seen. You can check out the table for all of the bugs released this month. There were 100 documented. Uh, we've got three down here at the bottom that were released uh, a little earlier this month for Chromium. I do wanna point out the enormous number of postscripts and PCL six class printer driver bugs. Yep, printer things again, uh, as well as a bunch of DNS bugs. And I don't want people to freak out about all these DNS bugs. I know patching a DNS server is always a little stress inducing. Uh, but you'll notice the CVSS on these is a bit lower. That's because they all require uh, elevated privileges or some other sort of privileges to actually uh, be carried out by a threat actor. Moving on to the other bugs, there's another CVSS 9.8 bug in the Pragmatic General Multicast that's similar to MSMQ, uh, but it's not as likely to be exploited. There's also a bug in the DHCP server, but it may not be as severe as it initially sounds, uh, simply because DHCP is not routable. Also, DHCP is not secure. You should know this by now. Uh, so it would be an act like a threat actor would have to get into your enterprise first and then pivot. And if they could already do that, they're probably already in, in control enough. They're gonna get your DHCP server one way or another. Um, so don't freak out about that. Definitely test and deploy, of course but uh, that's a, just a patch, don't panic sort of thing. A couple other critical bugs in older proto uh, protocols, uh, layer two tunneling protocol, as well as PPTP, uh, and a raw image extension. Uh, so nothing exciting there. Like I said, we've got the other code execution bugs, a lot of code execution bugs this month. We've got 45 total, uh, I think 45-ish total. So like almost half the release out of a hundred bugs is RCE. So that's pretty, that's pretty big. Uh, I do want to note one thing here, the RPC runtime, it, the CVSS says privileges required low, the description says unauthenticated attacker. But, 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 so, okay. I, I don't know. I'm not going to get the hat back out for that one. It's just, whatever. We got a bunch of elevation of privilege bugs as well. These are pretty much all standard uh, where you run a specially crafted code, you elevate the system. Kind of like what we saw with the Apple bug, you would elevate to root in that case. There are a couple bugs that require a man in the middle, uh, Kerberos and NetLogon. So those are a little bit interesting. Uh, the Kerberos bug could lead to a downgrade of encryption. Ah, that's cool. Uh, again, this is not the thing I really think we'll see impacting a lot of enterprises. Uh, we've got some security feature bypass bugs, including four that require physical access. Microsoft used to not patch bugs that required physical access, so kudos to them for changing that policy uh, because these affect like the lock screen and the Windows Boot Manager, which are specifically there to pre prevent physical access attacks. So good for them. Uh, we do have some info disclosure bugs. Uh, almost all of them are just random memory contents. There is one in Azure Machine Learning that could uh, read but not modify. That's, a, that's an important thing. Uh, system logs. Uh, of course, with Azure Machine Learning Compute, you have to upgrade your instance. You can't just apply a patch. Uh, there's a spoofing related uh, bug in uh, SharePoint that is an NTLM relay exploit. I don't consider that spoofing, Microsoft does. I consider that elevation of privilege because if I can get you to relay your NTLM credentials, I might be able to replay them and then elevate to you. So, but that's kind of, that's kind of cutting hairs as it were. So. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, a few DOSs, but nothing extraordinary. And a couple cross-site scripting bugs at Dynamics 365. Last two months in a row, they were five. This month, they're three. Combo breaker. 
So that pretty much summarizes the release. Uh, to kind of wrap up, we have a, a bunch of Adobe patches, including some from Pwned Own, always good to see. We've got Apple attacks, uh, so make sure you get those two CVEs patched across all your Apple devices. CLFS and Microsoft under active attack again, as it was in February. Was it a uh, failed patch? The world may never know. We also have very uh, critical bug in MSMQ, so make sure you patch that. And then again, take a look at the blog for details on everything else. I'd like to thank you for joining us. As always, please uh, leave a comment if you like this format or have suggestions on how we can improve it. Be sure to like and subscribe for further stuff. And uh, we'll see you in May. Until then, stay safe. May all your reboots be smooth and clean.